All right, um, so we're going to look at 2.2 intersecting lines today, but I want to first refresh our memory on graphing linear equations. Uh, from 2.1, we had an introduction to uh, the basics of graphing. So I've got a couple of warm-ups here I want us to give it uh, an attempt on. Um, it'd be good if you paused it um, and I gave it an attempt before. Uh, just Don't just watch me do it. Um, it's better for you to practice it than to just copy me doing it. You're not there's not good learning happening when you just watch me do it. So um, give it a shot and then hit uh, so hit pause. Give it a shot and then hit play. But I'm gonna go ahead and jump right in. Um, the the strategy um, I wanted you to to attempt was that x y table. So we're gonna go ahead and create our own x y values. And typically we go from negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, through 0, to 1, 2, 3. Okay? Now I know I showed you the intercept method. You can use that method as well. We'll find out there's other methods that might make it even uh, be maybe even easier if we can understand them and use them correctly. So what happens is, is I get to decide what the x values are, and I'm going to plug them in for every x in the equation. Here, the equation is y equals 4x minus 3. So I'm going to plug it in for this x at minus 3, at minus 2, at minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3, and get my resulting y value. And once I do that, then the next part of my uh, table here becomes my actual x and then the corresponding y coordinate. Then I'll have a set of coordinates that I can plot on my Cartesian coordinate system, connect the dots, and I've got my graph. All right, so plugging in minus 3, I get y equals 4 times minus 3 minus 3. 4 times minus 3 is minus 12. Minus 3 is minus 15. So I get the point minus 3 minus 15. Putting in minus 2 for x, I get y equals, and I'm gonna, not going to put y equals anymore. I'm just going to put um, the actual equation. Uh, 4 times minus 2 minus 3, 4 times minus 2 is minus 8, minus 3 is minus 11, so I get the point minus 2, minus 11. When I put in minus 1, 4 times minus 1, minus 3, 4 times minus 1 is minus 4, minus 3 is minus 7, and I get minus 1, minus 7. Putting in 0, I get 4 times 0, minus 3, 4 times 0 is 0, 0 minus 3 is minus 3, so I get the point 0 minus 3. Plug in 1, 4 times 1 minus 3 is 4 times 1 is 4, minus 3 is 1, so I get the point 1, 1. Putting in 2, I get 4 times 2 minus 3, 4 times 2 is 8, minus 3 is 5, so the point 2, 5. And putting in 3, 4 times 3 minus 3. 4 times 3 is 12, minus 3 is 9. I get the point 3, 9. Now I can go ahead and make my coordinate system. One thing I'll notice through inspection is I have a lot of negatives. Minus 15, so I'm probably going to try to make this a little bottom heavy and go down to minus 15. So there's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then just try to kind of keep that scale left and right, up and down. And I can plot my points. So minus 3 minus 15 is left 3, down 15, down around here. Minus 2 minus 11 is left 2, down 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So minus 2 minus 11. Minus 1 minus 7 is left 1, down 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So minus 1 minus 7. 0 minus 3 isn't left or right at all because it's 0. So I uh, stay on the y-axis and I go down 3, 1, 2, 3. 1, 1 is to the right 1, up 1. 2, 5 is over 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 5. And 3, 9 would be over 3, up 9, which should be about right here. Now I can go ahead and connect the dots. And there's our graph. All right, is it perfect? No, but we talked about that's okay. 
um, because we're just scratching this out, okay? Now, one thing we need to notice is, A, this was a lot of work. This was a lot of work to get to this. The intercept method made things a lot quicker because we only needed two points. What I want to share with you is kind of introduce the idea of what's called slope-intercept form. And what slope-intercept form does for us is if we have slope-intercept form, and usually we can get to it, uh, we can graph very quickly and easily. So I want to introduce slope-intercept form for graphing. And slope-intercept form is if we have y equals and then something, we'll call it m, it's called, it's the slope, we'll say m touching the x plus b. This is our slope-intercept form. Note that y, what is in front of the y is 1y, okay? We need y by itself. And then m is what's called our slope or our rate of change. And if you think of slope like ski slopes, okay, our slope is, you know, how steep is our line? This slope tells us how steep <coughs> our line is. Here, here we have y equals mx plus b. Here our slope is 4. Our b is minus 3. We have 1y. There's an invisible 1 in front of the y, so we have slope-intercept form. Here our slope is 4, and it seems fairly steep. You know, if that was a hill, that would be a steep hill to climb. B is called our, is our y-intercept. B is our y-intercept, and I usually call it our starting spot. Okay? If I want to use the slope-intercept form to do this quickly, the goal here is efficiency. I don't want to make that entire table if I don't have to. So if I can get to slope-intercept form, I can be very quick and efficient uh, by doing this process that I'm going to uh, show you right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with that starting spot, that y-intercept. The y-intercept we've identified at minus 3, so that means I have a point at 0 minus 3. That's going to be one of the points, so I would actually go down and put a point at 0 minus 3. Notice it's on there. It should be. Okay, we already graphed it the long way. Now I'm showing you the short way. Gets us there quicker. So, there's my starting spot. Then I'm going to take my slope of 4. The number that's touching the x is my slope. Whatever's touching the x is my slope. And I'm going to make it a fraction by putting it over 1. And then the top number is my rise or the up and down, and the bottom is my run or my left and right, okay? So this tells me up four and right one. Up four, right one, up four, right one, up four, right one. So I'm gonna count up four, one, two, three, four, and then to the right one. Look, notice I land right on another point that I came up with, with in my XY table. And I can continue this pattern where I go up four, one, two, three, four, right one. And notice I'll keep landing on a point that's already on the line. In fact, I could go backwards. Positive four could also be four over one, where it's negative four, negative one, where I go down four, and I go left one. Look what happens if I start it this point, 0, negative 3, my, my intercept, and I go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I go left 1, lands right on there, right? I go down 4, 1, 2, did I lose my count somewhere? 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1, sorry, I messed my, that's not a point, it landed on there, but it's not a point, that one's a bad one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1. Notice I'm going negative 4, negative 1, down 4, left 1. So I can go from here. Down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, left 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, left 1. Okay? This pattern, this slope is constant for the entire line. Whether you're going up 
four over one, up four over one, or whether you're going down four, left one, down four, left one, down four, left one. Notice minus four over minus one is the same as up four to the right one, okay? So that's very dynamic, but as long as we get our slope-intercept form, this should go fairly smoothly. Let's try that with this question, okay? Let's try that with question number two. Let's see if this is quicker, okay? So slope-intercept form. I have y equals mx, m. Here is negative 0.5, but I know 0.5 is 1 half. So my slope is negative 1 half, and my intercept is at 2, right? y equals m x plus b. m x plus b, slope is minus 1 half, b is 2. So now I can go ahead and graph. I should be able to graph this quickly and efficiently. Start at your B, your starting spot, your y-intercept. Our y-intercept is at 2. That means our intercept is at the point 0, 2. So I'm going to go 0 up to, I've already got one point. Now I can just count off my slope. The interesting thing about slope is that it doesn't matter if the minus goes on top or on bottom, meaning I can go down 1 to the right 2 or... I can go up one to the left two. Sorry, let me say that differently. <laughs> it's rise over run. So I can go down one, right two, or I can go up one, left two. Let me show you what, what I mean by that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with, uh, I'm gonna call it, my slope is minus one over two, meaning I'm gonna go rise, I'm gonna go down, 1 over my run, which is right, which is positive. Notice this is a positive 2. If this is going to be a negative 1 half, the top or the bottom has to be negative, and the other, the opposite has to be positive, right? Only one can be negative for it to be a negative slope. So I'm going to go down 1, right 2. So down 1, right 2, there's a point. Down 1, right 2, there's a point. It only takes a few of these to recognize, hey, I've got enough to make my line. All right, don't you don't have to overdo this. Again, going back to hey, if the minus is on bottom, if I take minus one half and I make the positive on top and the negative on bottom, that means I'm going to go up one because positive one is up one, and this says I'm going to go left two because negative in the run direction is to the left. So I could go up one left two. Look at that. Lands right on it. Up one, left two. Lands right on it, okay? If my scale was a little bit better, it'd, it'd work out a lot better, okay? But I'm hoping that through this warm-up, you see that this is a more efficient way to graph. We could definitely graph this using an XY table, but it does take a lot more time, okay? Now, more warm-up problems, take a look at these. We have x minus 2y equals 4 and 4x plus 2y equals 1. And notice neither are in slope-intercept form. Neither of these are y equals mx plus b, meaning 1y by itself equals mx plus b. And that would be a problem for us that we would notice whether we did the slope-intercept form or whether we did an XY table. We really need to, to do an XY table or to do this form, we need to go ahead and um, put this in Y equals form. So, to solve for Y, I'm gonna move the X over. All right, I'm just gonna do some algebra. I wanna isolate this Y right here. On problem two, I wanna isolate this Y right here. You'll see that it's kind of the same old song and dance. To get the Y by itself, move everything to the other side. So this X has got to move over. It's showing a positive X, so we always do the opposite. X minus X makes it go away. I just have to make sure I do the same minus X 
to the other side of the equation, meaning the other side of the equal sign. So now this x over here goes to 0, because x minus x is 0. I'm left with minus 2y equals, bring that equal sign down, 4 minus x. Okay? I still don't have 1y yet. I have minus 2y. So if it's multiplying by a number, I always divide by whatever's number is touching y. This happens to be minus 2. So I'm going to divide all of these things over here by minus 2. And look at what we end up with. We end up with, I'm going to change colors here. Minus 2 divided by minus 2 is 1, so we get y by itself. 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. And negative x divided by negative 2 is positive 1 half x. Like there's an invisible 1 right here. Notice negative divided by a negative is positive, And we just have 1 over 2 x. A little bit of rearranging here. Slope intercept form is 1 half x minus 2. So if I wanted to graph this quickly, I'm going to make my Cartesian coordinate system. And I'm going to start at minus 2 because my b here is minus 2. So I go to minus 2. There's one point. My slope is up 1, right 2. Up positive 1, positive 2. So up 1 over 2. So up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. And there we go. Okay. Hopefully, if you catch on to these pieces, rewind it as many times as you need to, practice as many times as you need to, you see that this is much more efficient than doing an XY table. Identifying the intercept and then using the slope to count it off. Okay. Up one to the right two. Up one to the right two. Up one over two. Up one over two. Up one over two. It'd go on forever like that. That slope's a constant. Okay, let's try number two. I need some space here. I have 4x plus 2y equals 1. I do not have slope intercept form. I need to get this y by itself. So I'm going to move everything to the other side. It shows plus 4x, so I do the opposite and subtract 4x from both sides. And I'm left with 2y equals 1 minus 4x. Now I go ahead and divide by 2, whatever's touching the y, to get y by itself. So I'm going to divide that by 2. I'm going to divide that by 2. And I get 1 half, because 1 divided by 2 is 1 half, minus 4 divided by 2 is 2, x. Rearranging, I get minus 2x plus 1 half. Okay? If I wanted to graph this quickly and efficiently, Uh, let's see, I'm going to start at plus 1 half. No big deal. It's between 0 and 1, so it's about right there. I'm going to go down 2 to the right 1. So here's 1, here's 2 to the right 1. 1, 2 to the right 1. And there I have enough points to make a line. Okay? Now, an even easier way to graph is to go online. There are lots of very good uh, free graphing calculators out there. The easiest, the best one I think out there is desmos.com, D-S-M-O-S.com. This is something I want you to use throughout this chapter, especially when we get into quadratics. It can be used now with linear equations, but definitely in the next few sections when we get into quadratics. We're going to take advantage of, um, you know, instead of doing this stuff on paper, let's use the, the practical utilities out there. This is even something you can download on your phone and have a grapher on your phone completely for free. And here's how easy it works. You just type in your equation. There's a little notepad you can open up here. This is technically in y equals, okay? So if I want to graph this, I, need to, I can't type x minus 2y equals 4. I have to type that equation. And I can't remember what that equation was, but I know that this one was um, minus 2x plus a half. So I can type in minus 2x plus, and to do a half, I just type 1 divided by 2. Okay, remember division makes a fraction, right? And notice here is our line. Very, 
uh, straightforward. Okay, um, let me go ahead and size this so we can see it along with my graph, see if it's very similar, should be identical. Where is it? There it is. Okay, notice what goes through the point zero, a half, that's what we have here. Okay, and it's sloped down. Okay, so just quickly to investigate this y equals mx plus b idea. Okay, because I think it's a good thing. Uh, you know, let's use Desmos to do that. It's a very powerful thing. So I can go ahead and start again with a new graph, and I'm just going to type in mx, add a slider for m, no problem, and I'm going to say plus b, and add a slider for b. And what these sliders do lets me go ahead and grab this and slide it to change the value, and you'll understand what, that, what the impact of that has on the function. So notice I said b was our starting spot. If b is 0, and I just have an equation of y equals, here it happens to be 1 for m, so 1 equals x, notice b is not up or down at all. It goes right through the middle, right through the origin. b tells us how high up and down to where to put this graph. Look, the reality is you only need two pieces of information for any straight line you want to graph. If I said, think of a line in your head, on this Cartesian coordinate system and explain it to me. Very quickly, in a few minutes maybe, you'd come up with the idea of the slope. You'd say, well, it's not flat. It's not flat, and it's not vertical. It's somewhere in between. And I'd say, well, is it going up left or right, or is it going down left or right, right? Is our slope negative going down, or is our slope positive going up left or right? And you'd say it's going up. And I'd say, oh, is this your line right here? And you'd say, no, that's close. The slope is right, but you don't have it in the right spot. And I'd say, well, where's the right spot? Is it up here? Is it up here? Is it down here? Where is, does your line go? And you see very quickly, it starts to make sense that you, you realize, oh, all I need is a slope and an intercept, and I can graph any straight line. I can explain and make and correctly identify any straight line just with how steep it is and where do I put it down okay and that's what we get out of this slope intercept if we understand the pieces even though we start with hey B our intercept or where does it cross the Y intercept okay as B goes to 10 it's gonna cross up there okay here it's crossing at 6.6 .6. if B were negative 3.1 it goes down and crosses at minus 3.1, right? And then our slope, once we get it set down somewhere, our slope is how steep it is left to right. Notice that a flat, a flat horizontal line has a slope of zero. That should make sense. If I asked you what's the slope of the floor, you'd say there is no slope. If you were on skis, you would not move because there is no slope, okay? Now if you're standing on this, <clears throat> on skis, you might go sliding down this way. If you're on skis and the slope looks like this, you might go sliding down this way. But when there is no slope, when the M is zero, it's flat, okay? And then B takes over. It's a flat line wherever B is, okay, wherever we set it down. Notice as the slope gets more and more great, as M goes towards Five and then six and then eight and then ten it gets steeper and steeper if we went to a thousand if I said a thousand here it's very steep it's almost vertical if I kept adding zeros it gets more and more vertical and the idea is as this goes to infinity it becomes um, infinitely steep hard to explain infinitely steep but you can imagine on a scale of like here to the sun, a ray of light travels in a straight line. Most of those from what our eyes can see are infinitely straight, like infinite zeros here. But the reality is sunlight hits us in different angles, even though they might be minusculely de degree differences. Um, and so their slopes are just a little bit different, okay? <laughs> Even though, if for all intents that we need it for, intents and purposes, 
they're identically, you know, infinitely uh, high. And so the point is, um, because we can't define an infinite slope, we can't define a vertical line with a slope of infinity, we call it undefined, okay? Because if it's a billion, it might be a billion and one, or a trillion, or a trillion and one, trillion times two, all those silly infinity plus one ideas get wrapped up into what is a vertical line, okay? So if you see a vertical line, um, the slope is, uh, is infinite, okay? It's undefined. All right, taking a step back into intersecting lines, the only difference that we're going to see today from what we just saw is that now we're going to put two graphs on one line, or two lines on one graph. I said it backwards. Okay, we're going to put two graphs on one line. When we do that, it's called a system of equations. A system of equations is when you take two or more equations and try to solve them at the same time. Frequently, these types of models are used in business to determine how to make the most money. We're going to look at it in a much smaller scale. In solving linear equations, we know that enough ordered pairs, the solution, we can substitute the values in, and it makes a statement true. This theory holds true for systems, but it has to satisfy both equations at the same time. Okay, so just a brief introduction is that first we're going to go ahead and check a point is the point 2, negative 1 a solution of the system? And what it's saying is if I put in x equals 2 <coughs> for both of these, will I get y equals minus 1 for both of these? If the answer is, or if that happens yes for both, then it's a yes. If it is no for the first one, the answer is no. If it's yes for the first one and no for the second one, the answer is no. So it has to be a solution for both. So let's go ahead and test when x equals 2, y equals negative 1. So if I start with 3x minus y equals 7, I know that this is x and this is my y. So it's saying that 3 times 2, keep this minus sign, don't lose that, substitute in y for minus 1 with a negative, right, because it's minus 1. So now 3 times 2 is 6, minus minus is plus, so I get 6 plus 1 equals 7. That's true, okay? So it's true for this first one. Now I have to check the second one. So I have x minus 2y equals 4. So x is 2. So 2 minus 2 times minus 1 equals 4. 2 minus 2 times minus 1 is plus 2. Does 2 plus 2 equals 4? The answer is yes, so overall it works for both. Yes, this is a solution to this system, okay? We'll talk about what that means graphically, but right now we know that this point solves both of them simultaneously. 2, negative 1 is a solution to both, okay? Uh, go ahead and try this one. Go ahead and hit pause, try this one. Uh, and then resume and see if, uh, if what you got is what I got. So let's go ahead and test the point 1, negative 3 and the point 0, 0 as being solutions of this order system. So if I have 3x plus y equals 0, that means 1 is my x, the negative 3 is my y. So 3 times 1 plus minus 3 equals 0. Let's see, 3 minus 3 equals 0. That's a yes on the first equation. The second equation is x plus 2y equals minus 5. So if I put in 1 for x and minus 3 for y, I get 1 minus 6 equals minus 5. That is also yes. So this one is a yes. All right. Let's try point B, 0, 0. So 3x plus y equals 0. So 3 times 0 plus 0 equals 0. So 0 plus 0 equals 0. That's a yes. How about x plus 2y equals minus 5? Well, 3 times 0 plus 0. Whoops. Wrong, wrong equation. I was looking up higher. I wasn't looking at this one. Sorry. 0 plus 2 times 0 equals minus 5. 
0 plus 0 equals minus 5, that is a no. So this point is a no. It only has to be no to one of them. Okay? If it's no to one of the two equations, then it's a no. It's not a, not a uh, solution to the system. All right? Okay. We are going to look at solving linear systems by graphing. If we can use Desmos, that would be great. Just understand that to use Desmos, we need to make sure our equations are in y equals mx plus b form, that slope-intercept form. All right, so it says, as we learned in the previous lesson, the graph of a linear equation is a straight line. Each point on the line is a solution. For a system of two equations, we will have two, we'll graph two lines on the same Cartesian coordinate system. Then we can see all the points that are solutions. By finding what the lines have in common or the point of intersection, we'll find a solution to the system. So this will be a good idea to put down in your notes. When it comes to solving systems of two linear equations, there are three options. There are three things that could happen when solving a system of two linear equations. The first thing being that the lines intersect in one, one point. Okay, If the lines intersect in one point, there is one solution to this system. Okay, Sometimes the lines never intersect. Sometimes they intersect zero times, and that means that the lines are parallel. They will never intersect. Not really, really far this way. Not really, really far this way. Even if you go off the page on the graph, they're never going to intersect. That means there is no solution. Okay. So one intersection is one solution. No intersection is no solution. Okay. And sometimes no solution is written as a circle with a line through it. Or you could just type or write no solution. Okay. Sometimes it's that circle with a line through it, no solution. What happens if all the points intersect, overlap the entire time, meaning one line is graphed, here's the graph of that line, and then you take the time to graph the other line, and you land right on top of the other line. Both lines are on each other, okay? That means there are infinitely many solutions, okay? All right. Let's go ahead and graph uh, the solution, or sorry, graph to find the solutions to this system. Now, because it says graphically, I know we can graph by hand, but what ends up happening is, is when we do these by hand, we don't, we aren't very good artistes, and our scales get off a little bit, and we don't quite get the absolute correct answer. So what I want to do is go ahead and. Um, get, you know, kind of a two-step process. Uh, step one, um, get into y equals mx plus b form. Get into that slope-intercept form. And step two, use desmos.com. Okay? Use desmos.com to go ahead and find that intersection. So let's go ahead and uh, take 2x plus y equals 7 and x minus 2y equals 6, and let's get them in y equals mx plus b form, so then we can use that online grapher, okay? So I want to solve for y, I'm going to move 2x over by subtracting 2x to both sides, and I get y equals 7 minus 2x. If I rearrange that, that's y equals minus 2x plus 7. There's one y in front of it, so I can stop right there. So here's one of the equations. Here I have x minus 2y equals 6, so i got to move this x over by subtracting it. Just do the opposite of what it shows. Plus x, I'm going to subtract x. If it was minus x, I'd add x, right? So now I get minus 2y equals 6 minus x. I'm going to divide by whatever's touching y. That happens to be minus 2, and I'm going to do that to everything on the other side. And I get y equals, let's see, 6 divided by negative 2 is minus 3. Negative x divided by negative 2 is plus one half x. Okay, if I rearrange this, I would have y equals one half x minus three. So here are my two equations that I'm going to go ahead and graph onto on desmos.com. Let me go ahead and move this over, make it so maybe we can see both a little bit better. Can I size this down? No, nope, it's not letting me. All right, I'll just go ahead and use this. I'll just go back and forth. So minus two x plus seven. So minus 
x plus 7. I can hit enter. There's my first graph. And the other one is 1 half x minus 3. So I can do 1 divided by 2. So there's my 1 half x. Oops, put it down there. So I'll have to use my arrows to move my um, little, uh, you know, thingy here from being down below. Just arrow it over to be next to it so I have 1 half times x. You don't want 1 over 2x. 1 half x uh, minus 3 and notice it goes ahead and highlights our intersection. So what I, what I meant earlier was if I graph this by hand, you know, my it's going to look very similar to this but my intersection might be right here or here or here or here and I might just come stumble onto the wrong answer because my scale just because I freehand it and so when you guys graph these to find the solution of the system, use Desmos and notice my answer is going to be 4 minus 1. And what that means is the point 4, negative 1, the point 4, negative 1 is a solution into both of these. Meaning I can put 4 into here, negative 1 to here. We get four time, or 2 times 4 is 8, minus 1 is 7. I can put 4 into here and negative 1 into here. 4 minus, minus 2 times 1, 4 minus minus 2 is plus 2. We get 6. Notice that that is a solution. That would be the solution of this system of equations. All right. All right. Um, you can go ahead and try these. Let's take a look at an example where uh, we might be given a word problem and how we might want to go about solving this, okay? So on these word problems, what they want you to do is translate words to equations and then solve, okay? And then solve or to graph or graph them to find the solution. All right, so you're typically going to be given uh, a lot of words, but they're going to get us to two different equations, okay? So let's take a look. Sandra is making 10 quarts of punch from fruit juice and club soda. The number of quarts of fruit juice is four times the number of quarts of soda. How many quarts of fruit juice and how many quarts of soda does Sandra need? So just in the question at the very end, sometimes the question, if we read it, it tells us how to get to, you know, what are they asking? Get right to the question. We want to know how much fruit juice, so I'm going to put F for fruit juice, and how many club soda, so I'm going to put C for club soda. We want to know how many quarts of each is she going to need, okay? So now that I know I'm asking or answering how many quarts of fruit juice, how many quarts of club soda, I go back to the beginning and I see that, hey, fruit juice and club soda add up to 10 quarts. So one of my equations is going to be fruit juice plus club soda equals 10. Okay. The second equation is a little bit more tricky or interesting or, you know, you need, a little, you need to process it a little bit more to get to it. The second sentence says the number of quarts of fruit juice is four times the number of quarts of club soda. So what it's saying is that if I have um, eight fruit juice, then... I have two club soda. Now think that through. The number of quarts of fruit juice is four times the number of, meaning if there's eight fruit juice, there's two, because it's times four, right? Four times as many. Eight is four times as many as two. So what does this look like as an equation? Well, one big part of it is the word is. I said of Back in section 1.1, of means multiply, is means equals. So we're going to have some kind of comparison of fruit juice to club soda. And that comparison is with an equal sign. Some number of fruit juice equals some number of club soda. If we weren't paying attention, it would be very easy to say four times the fruit juice equals the club soda. And we would be wrong. We would be wrong. The reality is, if I look at eight fruit juices as four times the number of club sodas, I can't have four times the F. I gotta have four times 
the club sodas to go from two to eight, okay? I'm gonna have to take whatever, however many club sodas I have and take it times four to get the number of fruit juices, okay? Now from here, I said, you know, you should probably graph this, okay? So now we gotta go ahead and say, what's my X and what's my Y? And the reality is, is it doesn't matter. It's whatever you want it to be. So I'm gonna let F be my Y and C, my club, so my F is gonna change to Y and my C is gonna change to X. I'm doing this so I can type it into my decimals, right? I have to have Y equals. So if F is my Y value, I just change F to Y and C is gonna become X and I get X or Y plus X equals 10 and F is my Y and X, C is my X and I get Y equals 4X. Now when I go to Desmos, well first I gotta go ahead and, oops, where'd that go? I gotta solve for Y on this one first. The point was I also gotta solve for Y so I better move X over. So I get Y equals 10 minus X, okay? Which is just fruit juice equals 10 quarts minus the number of club soda quarts, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and graph y equals 10 minus x, so I go to Desmos, I clear it out, and I get y equals 10 minus x. There's one equation, and my other equation is y equals 4x, so 4x, and their intersection, I can go ahead and grab this, scroll on over, and see that the intersection of these two is at 2, 8, x is 2, y is 8 and what does that mean in terms of the answer to this well y is my fruit juice so my fruit juice must be 8 and that means my club soda must be 2 2 quarts of club soda 8 quarts I think quarts is QTS so 2 quarts of club soda 8 quarts of fruit juice, notice that would add up to 10 quarts, and notice there's four times as many quarts of fruit than there is of club soda. Okay, so it looks like a complex process. Rewind this if you need to, but basically we're going to translate our words into equations, and then we're going to go ahead and translate those equations into equations that we can put into Desmos so that we can find that intersection and that intersection we're going to interpret correctly to have the correct solution. All right? Let me know if you have any questions.